Welcome to Strip Cover Loot, I'm Adrian Fork. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we're here with the wrap-up video, yes Dalton? The wrap-up of the Fellowship of the Ring. Yes. Uh, we're gonna breathe, we're gonna soak it all in, talk about the experience as a whole. Uh, we finished the book. We're not talking about what parts, just everything all together. Yeah. Uh, where would you like to begin? Well, I, I think the place that I would like to start is, um, it's a sneaky trick that Tolkien pulled off here. Okay. Um, and this is the, li the line that got me. The line that got me and really made me step back and think about the mechanism, one of the mechanisms that makes this, no this novel so memorable is okay. that we fall in love with the hobbits, right? Okay. We see them as our friends. But they're completely... They're different from us. They're a different race yes. from us. But they're the ones that we fall in love with. And I thought... Th this is the line that drew it out for me. Uh, when they run into the other... Uh, at the end of the novel there, when they run into these other set of elves as they're passing through the forest, uh, one of them says, You breathe so loud, they could shoot you in the dark. Right? Okay. Now, these are the characters that we've fallen in love with. But why is it that we've fallen in love with them when they're so uh, contemptible at times, right? When they do all these these things that we wouldn't enjoy. You breathe so loud, they could shoot you in the dark. Okay. Have you ever have you ever spent time with a loud breather? Uh, no, I I I never spend time with myself. But you are a loud breather, right? Yes, I am. It's one of those endearing qualities to the Dalton, right? But if you're the random guy in the class, and you're the loud breather, I fucking hate you, don't I? I'm holding my breath right now. I want you to know, like, you're going to make but, me but pass that's, out. But that's that's what's going on there, right? Yes. Like, uh, it's... <laughs> hold on. This thing is so contemptible, this loud breather, unless it's someone that you're already close to. Okay. Simply by being the protagonist of this novel... These these people, these hobbits, are people that we're, we're close to, right? So when they're, when they're put out there as being loud breathers, if you're a random person, you're a loud breather, I don't like you. If you are, for instance, my lover, and you're a loud breather, that's one of those little things that is... <sighs> well, she's here again, it's right? It's the flaws that make you human. Right. Uh, this is the same thing like with scared writing. Uh, or dangerous writing, I'm sorry. Dangerous writing. You put embarrassing things out there, okay. and you're worried that people are going to judge you by them. But what happens is, from the reader's standpoint, a reader sees this and thinks, oh my god, I'm so glad yeah. someone else felt the same way. I mean, and it, endear it endears us to that, that speaker, whoever that speaker is in the text. Okay. Now, what are the things that we know about hobbits? They're loud breathers. They sleep too much. They have hairy feet. They breathe loudly. Uh... They eat constantly. They eat constantly. Uh, and these are the things that... that look, I, I'll relate this. I I had a lover once who was very... Like, like this, was, this was a woman that I almost married. Okay. Right. And one of the things that she hated about herself was she gritted her teeth at night. So she had chips in her teeth. Mm -hmm. And she hated that. But I always loved it. Right? Because it was this little thing that made her, her. Yes. Right? Uh, I had a good friend who gritted his teeth at night. And, you know, you'd spend a night drinking at the man's house and, you know, you'd stay. Uh, he'd wake you up at night. He was gritting his teeth so loud. Just like literally just warp the enamel off his teeth. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I understand. But because you know that person, you care about that person, it's, it's endearing. Right. So this is a dirty trick by Tolkien. How dare he? Right? How dare he? You, you, you set up this protagonist that is so faulted, but they are faults that, I mean, you know someone with hairy feet. Yes. You know someone who breathes loudly. Yes. You know someone who eats too much. You know someone who you can't text at all hours because no matter when you text them, they're asleep. I'm right? a hobbit. My God. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but you know that person. Yes. And you, you, so you are immediately... Uh, endeared to You're these creatures. Uh, 
I have to tell the breathing too You're loudly. You're what? Stricken. Oh, stricken. Uh, I have to re- uh, tell the breathing too loudly story. I remember this. I don't know if you do or not. Uh, I do breathe loud. Oh, we were dear. in a class together at one point, and the classroom's usually very quiet. And you actually looked over and you were just staring at me. And I looked over like, shit, don't make eye contact with him. And the Adrian stare. And you're like, are you dying, Dalton? I'm like, what? He's like, you're breathing. What's wrong? It's so loud. I did this? Yes. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. You need to quit smoking yesterday. You're breathing so fucking loud right now. And, you know, naturally somebody says that to you. The rest of the class, you're just like... (laughs) Well... Dalton's also a whistler. Okay. Like, Dalton's breathing always whistles. Okay. Um, so that's probably what it was. Dalton's breathing's whistle. What? I'm learning about myself. I whistle? You're... And it'll whistle. Okay. You breathe and it whistles. Uh, this is true. This is very true. <laughs> okay, I just did it. Uh, but no, my significant other has the uh, wonderful ability to speak in her sleep. Uh, if I wake up and I say, hey, uh, this is going on, like, can you wake up? If she is not fully awake, she will have a conversation that's just completely off the wall and ludicrous. Uh, and I will s- then spend the next week making fun of her. <laughs> uh, but that's an endearing quality. It's it's something that you come to adore. So, yeah, I, I give it. Uh, hobbits are made human through their faults and their flaws. And that, that same lover, she would have night terrors. Oh, yeah? Um, so she'd wake up screaming about things in the middle of the night. Okay. But... Eyes yes. still closed, still asleep, but screaming about things. Since we're talking about former lovers, <laughs> uh, I uh, was in a relationship with a woman for a very long time uh, who has something called a hypnagogic, hip, hypnagogic phenomenon. Are you familiar with what that is? No. Uh, when she would reach uh, REM sleep, REM sleep uh, her body would start to convulse. Now, you go out with someone, and the first night you spend together after you did a lot of drinking... You're, or she's falling asleep, you're still awake in the midst of falling asleep, all of a sudden just scariest fucking moment of your life. At which point I shake her awake, I'm like, you're dying, you need to go to the hospital one night. what the fuck are you talking about? Go to sleep. Uh, no, as soon as she hit deep sleep, she just, like, start convulsing. Terrifying. Well, since we're sharing these stories. <laughs> I'm no longer a Lord of the Rings wrap up. My first night with, with said former... Um, was the first night that we sort of did adult things, right? Okay. And um, <laughs> we're laying there in each other's embrace, and she begins laughing. And the first thing on my mind, I didn't think it was that bad. Like, that is the, inc- the incorrect gotta, reaction. Right, you got to give me a little bit of credit okay. here. Come on. This is, I, I haven't learned you yet, right? Um, it turns out she was just asleep, and she laughs in her sleep, too. That's terrifying. Laughs... Has night terrors and grits teeth in the sleep. Like, nighttime was terrifying <laughs> with said person. You didn't know what was going to happen. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure why I told that story. Uh, we're on a tangent now. But anyway, let's let's talk about Lord of the Rings. That's what people came here to yeah, listen about, yeah. not our former lives. The ending. Okay. Go. I told you from the beginning you wouldn't like it. Because this is not a novel's ending. This is the to-be-continued for the remainder of the book. Because this was meant to be one long, epic, encompassing story, not three individual care. books. It was. N- it is not. So this first book needs to have an ending. Okay. How did you feel about it your first time through? Uh, I'm okay with it, because... Now you're okay with it. How did you feel your first time through? I think you do feel cheated the first time through, absolutely so. Uh, because there is no climactic end, there is no resolution, it's... Oh, Boromir's going to take the ring. Frodo's going to go. Over. Uh, This is something that I do think Peter Jackson handles better in the film version. Uh, Since we're wrapping up, I'll talk a little bit about the film version. Um, My understanding is Christopher Tolkien was very upset with the film because he said, this is not my father's work. Uh, You took too many liberties with this, blah, blah, blah. Peter Jackson gave him a check. Um, The film version ends with a battle, a small battle sequence, at which Boromir sacrifices himself so that Frodo may escape. I like that. Because that is Boromir on both ends. Uh, It is Boromir who has uh, tried to acquire the ring from Frodo, who has fallen to the temptation of the ring, immediately encompassed by Boromir, regrets his decision and learns the error of his ways, which we get in the novel, but then sacrifices his life for Frodo. Interesting. So, um... Now, there is the little tidbit of a scene where Sam 
Samwise Gamgee, uh, Sam Gamgee, whatever the hell you want to call him, literally uh, almost drowns trying to get to Frodo. Because uh, this is the uh, endearing nature of hobbits. Uh, being close to one another, it's that the best friend aspect. Right. Uh, that makes Sam a human character because he's quite literally willing to die for his friend. Uh, and he almost drowns in order to ensure that Frodo doesn't bear the burden alone. I think that's a great great piece there. That's just wonderful. Uh, but it is just a little tidbit of the ending. Yeah, it's just, it ends with a whimper. A little bit so, yes. Not a bang. Uh, and, I, you know, of course, I, I told you you wouldn't like the ending. So I don't know what you were expecting. Telling me that I'm not going to like the ending doesn't mean that I can't say it's a terrible ending. Okay. So I don't know what you're saying. And I, I'm hoping I me, dampered this a little bit at telling least. Telling me that I'm not going to like the ending doesn't mean that the ending is suddenly imbued with some type of power that makes it amazing. Okay. Uh, so what's, what, what's your point? I don't know. What's I'm, your just, point I'm just I'm making I'm talking words. Well, I'll be damned. I'll be damned. Uh, I just realized, you know, again, this video that I am in fact a hobbit. Uh, however, I have always wanted a sign that says no admittance except on party business to put in front of my house. So that might happen after this lovely read-along. Anyway, uh, the next thing I have um, that I'd like to talk about while we're on the, the subject of disappointment, I'm not sure what the ring actually does. I'm not sure what the sub-rings do. Also, Captain Planet. <laughs> Your powers combined. Uh, there e the ring grants uh, a, a unlimited power, essentially. Uh, it, does, it seems very limited. Unlimited power. Now, you're invisible, and you're sort of in the world of the dead. Uh, you can uh, become invisible. Put into the hands of a hobbit, who are creatures with little to no power. Uh, this is literally putting the greatest weapon of all time in the hands of someone with uh, no power, who is weak. Uh, in their hands, they're immortal. They so don't die. forever. Now, they can't die, or they live forever? They live forever. There's a difference there, yes? I, I I think so, and you saying, can saying Im, saying immortal. You live forever, yes. I mean, if you get a, well, a speared to death, you die. Okay, uh, but you live forever. But you know, you also get the aspect uh, Bilbo talks about. He feels like uh, too much butter spread over toast, something like that. Like he's stretched thin. Uh, so in the you know hands of someone with no power, the ring grants you immortality. You can't die, which is an amazing power to have. Now it is uh, alleged that. In the hands of someone who already has power. Just real quick. Yes. In the hands of or on the hand of? On the hand of. Okay, so you have well, to be wearing it to get it. In the hands of, I think of as well, because the immortality comes just from the ring bearer. Okay. Uh, they don't have to wear the ring to receive that power. Uh, but someone who, like Gandalf says very specifically that if he were to wield the ring, put it on his finger, his power would be so amplified and limitless... That he would essentially become drunk with power. And he would be the next Sauron. But his power meaning what? Uh, we could assume magical power at that point. It would be like an amplifier. Galadriel says the same thing. That she cannot do this because she would be the next Sauron. But that doesn't even make sense when you're speaking about someone like Gandalf. Because the extent of the magic that we've seen in this novel, to this point in the series, is being able to conjure fire. Is being able to do this. You're st I mean, still, somebody puts a spear through your head, you're done. Okay. Right? Uh, and, and, you know, the same logic goes all the way back with uh, Isildur and Sauron. Sauron was defeated when the ring was slashed off his finger. Right. So, you're still prone... Not when the, the ring was slashed off his finger, when his finger was slashed off his body. Yes. Right? Uh, but you're still prone to, you know, earthly whatevers. You lose the ring, you lose the ring. Uh, but the power that it grants you in a, I, I would say, magical sense is so amplified that you can uh, do extreme damage. Massive damage. But but how? You I... put it on a hobbit, he turns invisible, he's half in the world of the dead, and he can live forever. Like, that's it. That doesn't sound bad to me, I'll take it. Doesn't sound bad, but it doesn't sound like I'm conquering civilizations because of it. Right? Now, how did Sauron... Sauron's the bad guy, right? Yes. Not Saruman. Damn you, Tolkien. Sauron, is he a wizard? Uh, he is a dark lord. I would assume there is some 
wizarding ability there. So how did that make him the greatest conqueror in the history of conquerors? I'm not sure. Right? Uh, so I, those are things that are very... So the power of the ring is off-putting to you. Yeah, because it's extremely vague. Y you don't know what it does. You have... I mean, you only see a couple times what it can do. And even then it's limited. Like, I, I would love for there to have been some scene where... Gandalf had to put it on to defeat something. Yeah, Frodo right. puts on the ring and summons Captain Planet. Or there is some, there is some scene in flashback of what, uh, what's the little weird creature who had the ring for a while? Gollum. Gollum. There's some little weird scene where Gollum did something with the ring, right? Because okay. Gollum was not a hobbit. A uh, Gollum was essentially a hobbit. I thought he was a, a regular. Person. No, he was more so a hobbit than anything. Uh, Are this, you sure? Oh, I'm very sure about this. Okay. But uh, all we get with him is the fact that he can swim real well and he turned invisible and... Yeah. You know, so I... I anyway. John C. commented on our third video, I believe, in the series that he would not trust Adrian with the ring and that is a good decision. <laughs> Regardless of the power it imbues that we've talked about for the last ten minutes... Sure, shall, sure, she did it. sure as hell wouldn't give it to Adrian. I want everyone to comment in the section, in the comment section below, with what they believe Adrian would do with the ring. Because obviously I'm confused about what the ring is. <laughs> Let's make it fun. Uh, if Adrian or Dalton was granted the ring, which power would we be bestowed within? Yeah, what would I be doing uh, with that ring? Uh, I, I, I don't understand, because I don't understand things at this point. It's, it's obvious to me. Hyper knitting. <laughs> Hyper knitting. <laughs> now, I, I, I want to concede to this. Um, I don't think I mentioned it in any of the, any of the videos. Okay. But um, I think one of the one of the one of the best parts of um, genre literature, especially, is that when we're put in this situation, we're putting in a scenario, and we're looking at the things that people are doing in this alternate type of reality. We have to think to ourselves what we would do if we were there. And, okay. and that's underlying in all of literature, right? Yes, that's, that's, yes. That's, that's where literature comes from. But I think it's especially uh, interesting to look at in genre fiction. Because the whole time, my idea was exactly what Boromir was thinking. You've got the ultimate weapon, fight the ultimate battle, and get rid of the bad guy. So again, this is John C.'s point coming forward. Adrian yeah. should not have the ring. Well, I don't know why that is a, an Adrian should not have the ring point. Isn't that the obvious solution here? I, I, this is the uh, good versus evil battle. Uh, yeah, you can put on the ring, you can defeat the bad guy, but then you become the bad guy. Not the ring will well, eat away at you. You will become the new Sauron. But don't you have to bet on yourself at some point in life? Look, and, and that that's 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 part of growing up, right? Okay. Uh, I think that's... That, at some point, look, what we're doing here is ambitious, and we've said that this is our goal is to make it full-time so that we are full-time in the world of, of letters. Uh, that's us betting on ourselves, okay? right? At some point, you have to look yourself in the mirror and say, hey, you're better than this, right? So at some point in this world, because, look, when they're just trying to destroy the ring, the big bad guy that everyone is living in fear of is still out there. He's still out there, but it is possible to defeat him if he does not have the power of the ring back. And he's not going to get the power of the ring back Hopefully. so long as you have the ring. Uh, but and he... the only way to ensure that is to kill him with the power of the ring. But even if you kill him, if the ring remains, this is this is a taking care of future generations. If you kill him, you can then dispose of the ring. Just as easily as you can dispose of the ring easier then you can dispose of the ring with him still alive. I think what you're pushing at here is uh, when the ring is still in existence, it's bound to Sauron. It, you know, it's always made that the ring is always trying to get back to Sauron. Uh, once Sauron's gone, the ring's going to bind itself to someone else. This is a saying that once you're the next bad person, you're eventually going to you know, spiral out of control because you cannot control the power of the ring. And it's just going to be the same thing over again. Okay, so what's the bigger threat? The fact that the, the big bad can always get back a hold of the ring and become the one that, that, that no one can control, or the fact that I may or may not become the big bad, but until I do, there will at least be some time there 
where there is no big bad. Say, say I kill Sauron today. Okay. Big bad's gone. Takes me 30 years to grow into big bad. Right? Okay. There's still 30 years where the rest of, of humanity, of non-humanity, of all the races going on here, can say, hey, let's build up some walls and, t- and, and, and prepare for this thing. Okay. And that's assuming that I, without that urge to be the big bad, can't destroy the ring. I really wish, see, at this point, um, we've talked about our, are we going to read further with this, and we decided at this time, no. Uh, we have played around with the idea of maybe next year we'll tackle Two Towers in September and kind of keep Lord of the Rings September and bound. Uh, I Which really will ruin my 30s. I know, you're fine. Uh, <laughs> I really wish that you could have already read uh, Frodo's Destruction of the Ring, What Happens. Uh, we'll get into that at a different Spoilers. time. Spoilers! Oh, come on, the ring's gonna be destroyed. You shush. You know it's happening. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll see if we're gonna continue on with this. Um, I know Steve, Steve Donahue over at his channels talked about going on with this, and I will absolutely you have our blessing, Steve. Please continue forward. We are not the end all of Lord of the Rings. Uh, but if we do continue this series, it will be next year. Maybe we'll read another book and continue forward in that fashion. Unless we're full time, at which we'll just read Lord of the Rings all the time, yeah? No. Okay, tried. I tried. At that point, I will be the big bad. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have 30 years to build a wall. Uh, anything else you really want to say about Lord of the Rings? Uh, we have to address here uh, the final thoughts and feelings of finishing Lord of the Rings. Whether you liked it or whether not, and from the comments, most people didn't like it, there's a sense of accomplishment. You read a book that is considered to be one of the greatest works of literature. By who? By many people. Uh, You've put this notch in your belt. You've become a better person for reading it. There are many other notches in my belt I would have rather had before having The Lord of the Rings knocked out. Yeah. I I don't know. Sure, okay, I've read it. I can say that I've experienced it. Uh, That's it? I think that's something to drink in and just uh, be proud of yourself for. Uh, Because... (laughs) (laughs) We've said many times there is no way we could have done this in a, oh, we're going to say, hey, we're going to read Lord of the Rings next week and fit it all in in one. Right. I would have slaughtered you. Uh, There's this, no way that this would have been taking place in a week. This is something that took a month over time. And, you know, that's another thing. We can pick up yeah almost anything. We're doing Frankenstein next month. Yeah. In a week. Lord of the Rings takes time. It does, and I'm glad that we allotted it several videos, uh, not just for the fact that that I would have had a Dalton Hyde if we tried to read all of them in one month. Um, but this is something that so many people were looking forward to. Yeah. And I am I am enjoying, as the videos go on, seeing more and more hate comments. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the one who has to sit there and just mine your way through the comments to try... I, I, I've mined through these. You worked through this these. Was not, uh, this this is, wasn't Harry Potter. This is not Harry Potter level of hate. Well, no, it's not Harry Potter <laughs> level of Adrian can't read the comments. Yes. Uh, uh, tell me, do you think that you would have been able to work your way through all of these books in a single month? Like all three of them? Yeah. Oh, God, no. Okay. Well, no, 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 no. Um... It could I had if I had to? Yeah. Could you have if you had to? Yeah. No, uh, I don't think I could have. If you had I to, I honestly you could don't have. think I could have. S- sitting down and reading this, there were so many times where I, I opened my eyes and I realized I'm three pages ahead, and I don't remember the last three pages, <laughs> so I have to go back and reread them. Yes. And it didn't matter because it was all. Frodo made his way to the top of the hill and looked around. There was nothing there. He made his way to the bottom of the hill and looked around. There was nothing there either. But Aragorn was somewhere, and and Frodo didn't know where, but he knew he was close. Fair enough. Uh, anything else you really want to say about the Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring? That's all the notes I have for the finale, for the wrap up. I, I would like to know. I would like to know your thoughts and feelings, having gotten through this, or if you didn't get through this. What was it that killed it for you? Where was it that you stopped? Uh, unfortunately, I made it all the way through. <laughs> uh, I, I enjoy this. Uh, this is something that I've held near and dear to me for a long time. I wouldn't be objective to reading uh, the Two Towers next. You say um, you read this every year. What, what What is it that you read every year? I read Fellowship. You read Fellowship every Fellowships, year. Fellowships, and this, my only fucking logic behind this is Fellowship starts in September. And I, I don't know, just picking it up in September and reading it in September and the ambiance of The Hobbit is something that I love. I believe that someone said that The Hobbit began in September too, didn't they? I'm not sure. I've read The Hobbit once. Because that September is 
Bilbo's birthday, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So he went out on his birthday, I believe. Okay. This I, book mentions that he left on his birthday one year. I've read The Hobbit once, and as much as you, like I keep saying Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings, I don't like The Hobbit. Really? It's a very... It's a kid's book. Right? It, it is. It is. Uh, Lord of the Rings was written for adults. The Hobbit was written for children. Yeah. It shows. Uh, it, the Hobbit is taking all three of the Lord of the Rings and condensing them into like a short story. Uh, so maybe you would have loved The Hobbit. No. <laughs> uh, but Also, any, I would like to say one more time... Uh, Tom Bombadillo. What about Tom Bombadillo? Oh, just Tom Bombadillo. Tom Bombadillo, okay. Lord uh, of the Mushrooms. I hate you so much. Uh, if you do like things like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. We will occasionally do more read-alongs. Uh, we do Harry Potter every week. Uh, but maybe we'll get away from doing read-alongs and go back to just uh, hard reviews again. And I am Lord of the Mushroom Clouds. The Dark Lord of the Mushroom Clouds.